Have you ever wondered how your Apple Watch can tell if you're tossing, dreaming, or in deep sleep? Well, today we'll dive into the science behind the Apple Watch, why it's quite different from other devices, and why that makes it surprising it does so well. We'll also share scientific data showcasing that the Apple Watch is one of the best sleep trackers out there, though there are a few competitors that give it a run for its money. To tell this story, we first need to go back in time just a few years, back to 2020, when sleep tracking on wearables, and especially on the Apple Watch, was still in its early stages. With the introduction of watchOS 7, sleep tracking was introduced, and the Apple Watch series 3 and up could identify just two states, awake or asleep. We don't actually know much about how this worked, but what we do know is that the performance of this capability wasn't that amazing. And I based that statement on a lot of scientific literature and an overview of those results is displayed right here. So these are the results from many scientific papers combined into a single plot, where along the horizontal axis we have the percentage of correctly detected sleep time and along the vertical axis we have the percentage of correctly detected awake time. And I included mostly older-ish devices that were around at the time that Apple introduced their sleep tracking. And the best device would be as far to the top right as possible, so both detecting sleep and wakefulness. But as you can see, the devices around at the time made some kind of trade-off between detecting sleep and wakefulness, but never detecting both correctly. And the Apple Watch Series 6, which you can see right here, which used the same kind of sleep tracking that Apple originally introduced, is also along this line right here. So it's not doing better or worse than any device out there. It just seems to favor detecting a lot of sleep time and not necessarily wakefulness, so really not that sensitive to detecting wakefulness but overall none of these devices really stands out strongly. So as you can see that didn't look amazing for the Apple Watch. That's not to say it was bad, it just wasn't better than the competition. Luckily an update in 2022 with iOS 16 and watchOS 9 really changed the sleep tracking capabilities of the Apple Watch. And honestly, it was high time since the industry standard for many years was not just to track if you were awake or asleep, but to track four sleep stages, awake, deep sleep, core sleep, and REM sleep. Now, core sleep, known as light sleep in most other sleep trackers, is a significant part of your sleep cycle, and it's important for various physiological reasons. Of course, it's a very Apple thing to change the name. It does make sense, though, to call it core sleep instead of light sleep. As Apple states, this avoids possible unintended implications of the term light. Light sleep might sound suboptimal, but it's normal and an important aspect of sleep often making up about 50% of your night's sleep. But let's get back to the quality of the sleep stage tracking. As you will see later, the Apple Watch is one of the top two performers when it comes to sleep stage tracking. To understand why it's quite amazing that sleep trackers like the Apple Watch can track your sleep stages, we first need to understand how scientists track your sleep stages. The scientific gold standard for measuring sleep is polysonography or PSG. This complicated method involves multiple sensors on the body to track your brain waves, potentially also oxygen levels, heart rate and even eye and leg movements. And I've actually measured my own sleep with a PSG device for about a hundred nights over the last few years and though it's very accurate it's also super cumbersome and it isn't something you can do every night at home so the solution is to try and predict your sleep stages as accurately as possible using other measurements and the apple watch has a unique way of doing this now to understand what makes the apple watch special we first need to understand how other sleep trackers generally work Many smartwatches and sleep trackers base their sleep stage tracking on several different types of measurements, like your heart rate, heart rate variability, skin temperature and movement. And that's for instance how one of the best and most popular sleep trackers out there works, the Aura Ring, which uses a combination of several data sources to track your sleep stages. Now in this video I'll use the Aura Ring as a good example of how many sleep trackers typically track your sleep stages, since the Aura Ring is one of the top performers in this space. Let's break it down. First of all we have the accelerometer, this sensor measures your movement. When you're tossing and turning, the ring thinks you're more likely awake, and when you're still, you're more likely asleep. Now you can see that, for instance, in this example plot right here from a scientific paper about the aura ring. The spikes in movement clearly show when the person was more likely awake. However, movement alone isn't enough for the aura ring to actually determine your sleep stages. So the aura ring also measures, for instance, your skin temperature, which will vary throughout the night. Your core body and brain temperature typically cool down during deep sleep and light sleep, and the temperatures get a bit higher during REM sleep. However, skin temperature, which is what the aura ring and Apple Watch can measure, is actually something very different from core body temperature, which might explain why the example Aura shows in their scientific paper shows very different patterns. You can see the lowest skin temperatures in red during REM sleep later in the night and higher temperatures during deep sleep and light sleep, especially earlier in the night. I found this super interesting, so let's go on a 45 second tangent together and talk about temperature regulation. And to have you stick around, I'll reward you with videos of sleeping kittens and puppies. 
Now, when sleep starts, core body temperature actually drops, but your skin temperature rises. And this makes sense if we think about it. As the body needs to get rid of the heat, your body does this via the skin. So the heat from the core is redistributed to the skin, causing the skin temperature to rise. Now, this redistribution is crucial for the reduction of core body temperature. However, later on during the night, this regulation becomes quite a bit more complex, and also other factors like the environment start to play a role. But let's, as an example, look at the estimates of my own core body temperature and skin temperature estimates as measured by the core body temperature sensor, which is the easiest way I know of to get this kind of data. And here you can see how my core body temperature here in blue-green and my skin temperature in purple varied over three nights. First, looking at my core body temperature on top, you can see it usually started out high, then quickly dropped as I fell asleep and then stayed more or less stable or usually climbed a little bit. And as I was waking up, it was a lot higher. My skin temperature, on the other hand, showed very different patterns. Quite often it raises in the beginning and then slowly drops and has a few peaks and valleys throughout the night. So it's really clear from these plots right here that skin temperature and core body temperature are very different things, so you should be careful with their interpretation. Knowing your skin temperature likely helps with find the sleep stage detection, but I would guess it isn't the most important data point. And here's where we get to the really interesting data. Most devices use heart rate patterns as the most important data source for their sleep staging. First of all, they use heart rate. Now during deep sleep, your heart rate is lower and more stable, whereas during REM sleep is more variable. And you can clearly see differences in this example plot from the Aura scientific paper, though it's not as clear cut. What we can see is that during REM, so these red parts right here, the heart rate is quite variable, whereas during deep sleep, so these blue segments right here, it's much more stable, though it isn't that much lower during deep sleep than during REM sleep. And finally, light sleep in black seems to be somewhere in between these two. In addition to heart rate, the aura ring and most other sleep trackers out there also measure the exact intervals between your heartbeats, which gives us HRV or heart rate variability information. This data is crucial because it closely links to the autonomic nervous system, which changes during the different sleep stages. This is a very important metric that contains a lot of information on the sleep stages. If we compare the REM sleep in red and deep sleep in blue from the same example plot of the Aura publication, you can see that there's generally an increased HRV during REM sleep, which matches previous findings that showed that during REM sleep, HRV is generally higher. And we're not done. The Aura ring also uses what Aura calls circadian features. This basically means it uses general knowledge about what normal sleep patterns should look like. For instance, deep sleep is more common early in the night, whereas REM sleep is more frequent later in the night. By modeling these natural sleep-wake cycles, the ring can better predict your sleep stages. An artificial intelligence algorithm then analyzes all this data from the accelerometer, temperature sensor, heart rate, heart rate variability, and circadian patterns to classify your sleep stages. So why did I tell you so much about the Aura Ring, even though this video is about the Apple Watch? Well, I wanted to show you how much data Aura needs to estimate your sleep stages reliably. And Aura is not the only one. Fitbit, for instance, does something similar. It estimates your sleep stages using a combination of movement, heart rate, and HRV patterns. The HSleep Pod 4, on the other hand, another great sleep tracker, uses something similar to HRV and also your breathing rate to get sleep stage tracking performance similar to that of the Apple Watch in the Aura Ring. That means that all devices we discussed so far use heartbeat patterns in estimating your sleep stages. And I expect that for most decent sleep stage trackers out there, heart rate and especially HRV are the most important features in estimating your sleep stages. Though of course we cannot be sure since most of these algorithms are proprietary. However, Apple is the odd one out and they didn't go down this route and it doesn't use heart rate, HRV or heartbeats at all in estimating your sleep stages. Instead, it just uses motion. The Apple Watch contains a three-axis accelerometer that tracks your movements. It claims to not only measure the larger movements that would be visible to the naked eye, but also more subtle movements, including those generated by breathing. Based on just this accelerometer data, the Apple Watch is able to seemingly track your sleep stages quite accurately. In fact, it's the best sleep tracker in my testing and one of the top two based on scientific literature. And I'm going to share the actual data, however, before showing you those results, I'm hoping that my diligent testing has earned a subscribe from you and it also really helps me get access to the devices sooner from manufacturers if you leave a like or a comment. But enough self-promotion, back to the testing. And here you can see an overview of the sleep stage tracking performance of many devices that were tested in scientific literature. Along the horizontal axis, we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages. And on the vertical axis, we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. Now, the better the agreement, the more to the top right the device is. 
And here I didn't add the Apple Watch yet, just to give you an overview of which devices are doing good and which are doing poorly. So the best performer out there seems to be the Aura Ring, followed by Fitbit and the Whoop Strap, and Polar and Garmin aren't performing that well. But how does the Apple Watch compare to this? Well, that's plotted in sign right here. So the Apple Watch really seems to be among some of the top performers. Not quite as good as the Aura Ring 3, but better than Fitbit and the Whoop Strap, and a lot better than Polar and Garmin. But let's take a look at some more devices. And those results are displayed right here. So these contain many more devices, but the limitation is that they were just tested on me. And you might also be wondering what the different colors are. So those are different reference devices. So the devices not marked in any color were tested against the Dream 2 EEG headband. The devices marked in blue purple were tested against polysomnography, so the gold standard. And the devices marked in green were tested against the ZMAX EEG device. All three are decent reference devices, but the polysomnography device is definitely best. And again, we want the devices to be as far to the top right as possible. And as you can see, Apple Watches are again among some of the top performers. And on me, they're basically the consistent top performer. But other good devices out there are again the Aura Ring, but also the HD Pod 3 does really well. Also, similar to before, the Whoop Strap and different Fitbit devices are sort of second tier. And then Garmin and Polar are really not that great. And especially Chinese devices are the worst ones out there. And this again confirms that the Apple Watch is a good sleep tracker on a healthy individual at least. And we can also see that different models of the Apple Watch all appear to do about equally well. All of them are on the top right right here. So I really don't think there's a distinction between them. The reason this surprises me is because I would have thought that just breathing rate and movement alone are not enough to get reliable sleep stage tracking, especially since HRV appears to be quite important in most other devices. Still, Apple does manage to get good sleep stage tracking without any of that. To give you some perspective, Aura actually showed in one of their papers how the Aura Ring performs using just accelerometer data. If Aura just uses the accelerometer data to train our model, it really doesn't do that well. Light sleep and awake time might still be okay, but REM sleep and deep sleep performance is quite poor. The next step was to add temperature data, and this improved performance just marginally, but just accelerometer data and temperature data again wasn't enough. So next they added heart rate variability and that's where we see a big jump in performance. Here it's really doing quite well. And by also including the circadian rhythm features, the performance of the Aura Ring becomes really good. I'm really impressed with this performance, but it also shows you how impressive it is that the Apple Watch gets good sleep stage tracking using just the accelerometer. If we put the performance numbers of the Aura Ring and the Apple Watch side by side using just the accelerometer data, we can see that the Apple Watch is clearly outperforming the Aura Ring in every sleep stage, except for awake time actually. So deep sleep, light sleep and REM sleep, all of these are predicted better by the Apple Watch. That is given that the Aura Ring can just use the accelerometer data. Of course, with all the other data types combined, the Aura Ring seems to be at least as good, potentially even better than the Apple Watch. So even though Aura and many other devices out there seem to need HRV data to get really good sleep stage tracking, somehow Apple is able to do this without using heartbeat information. And I suspect they had to do two things to make this work. First, they needed to collect a large data set where people were both an Apple Watch and a PSG device. Apple collected a massive data set of over 1000 nights of data for algorithm development, plus about 300 more for validation. But the second thing Apple needed to do is to train a robust algorithm. Now, I couldn't find the method that they used, but it seems to do quite well. Still, that's not to say that the model would not likely do better if they were to include heartbeat information. So why didn't they just add it and give us an even better sleep stage tracking algorithm? Well, we don't know for sure, but I suspect this is because of battery life. The heart rate sensor likely consumes significantly more energy compared to the accelerometer. And I imagine Apple might think that their sleep tracking is good enough with just the accelerometer, so why add a very battery intensive measurement. Which makes a lot of sense of course since many people struggle to keep the Apple Watch sufficiently charged to use it both during the day and the night. By the way, the fact that Apple got this to work with just the accelerometer gives me a lot of hope that relatively cheap watches can also get reliable sleep stage tracking since we just need a reliable accelerometer. You might be more interested now in getting an Apple Watch or ring for sleep tracking knowing how well they work. However, you need to be aware of one major limitation of wearable sleep tracking, namely the fact that it generally works best on relatively healthy sleepers. Now, this is not just true for Apple, but for basically all sleep stage trackers out there. By the way, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now, before showing you the test results, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter after the summer to share my first results with you sooner. If you're interested, check out this link up here.
Here we have that same overview from before. So again, we want the devices to be as far to the top right as possible. But now in gray, I add the results from studies from people with a sleep disorder. And as you can see, almost all devices perform a lot worse the moment we're not looking at healthy sleepers, but people with some kind of sleep issue. We see, for instance, that the Apple Watch 8 goes from up here here to down here and we see something similar for the aura ring where before it was on the top right it drops all the way to down here so this shows us that most likely at least it's a lot harder for watches to track your sleep stages the moment you don't have normal sleep stage patterns so as long as you're a relatively healthy sleeper the apple watch seems to be a good sleep stage tracker however if you do have major sleep issues there might not be any good choices out there for you also, the best sleep trackers out there at the moment are not cheap. The Aura Ring, for instance, costs around $300, but in addition, you have to pay a $6 a month membership fee. The Whoop Strap, which is also a good sleep stage tracker, doesn't cost anything up front, but depending on when you buy it, it will likely set you back about $200 a year. If you decide to get the 8 Sleep Pod Cover, which is my personal favorite sleep improvement device, I suspect you're most likely interested in the active cooling and heating of the mattress, because if you just want sleep tracking, the price tag of about $2,500 is quite hefty. Now Fitbit is the cheapest brand on this list that is quite well and it currently provides a lot of sleep tracking without a subscription, though I'm a bit afraid that their current premium membership will take over more and more of the free features. Remarkably that means that the Apple Watch SE is amongst the more affordable options available, proving that excellent sleep stage tracking can be relatively affordable at least. That is as long as you own an iPhone and you don't mind charging the device every day. Based on my testing, I expect that all Apple Watches that support the sleep stage tracking perform more or less the same. So if you're a relatively normal sleeper, the Apple Watch could be a great choice and understanding how well you sleep can help you make meaningful changes to your lifestyle. However, there's more to sleep tracking than just your sleep stages. Like many other sleep trackers, the Apple Watch not only tracks your sleep stages, but also integrates this data with other health metrics like your resting heart rate, your breathing rate, skin temperature, and oxygen saturation. And that's a lot of data that not everyone is able to interpret without help. Over the last few years, the Aura Ring and the Whoop Strap have developed some of the best apps to actually show this data in an interpretable way to you, the user. And these are still my go-to devices. Apple, on the other hand, has historically been terrible when it comes to data presentation, with the health app being one of the worst apps for quickly viewing the most important data. Luckily, the iPhone and Apple Watch have recently gotten an upgrade with iOS 18, which now features the Vitals app. This shows you the five most important metrics according to Apple and their deviation from your normal. These are resting heart rate, breathing rate, wrist temperature, blood oxygen saturation, and sleep duration. I'll address the Vitals app in a separate video soon, but in summary, it's a good start, but not quite at the level of Aura or Whoop yet. However, the Apple Watch is a top performer in one more area. Besides tracking your sleep stages quite reliably, the Apple Watch is actually also one of the best heart rate trackers during exercise. And if you want to check that out, I made a full review right here. So overall, the Apple Watch is a great device for sleep tracking as long as you're a healthy sleeper and only the data presentation leaves something to be desired, but this does seem to be improving and there are also third-party apps available. Another downside is the battery life because even with the Ultra version, I tend to charge it every other day at least. But an additional benefit is not having a monthly subscription and also providing great sports tracking. So if you do decide to get an Apple Watch, a Whoop Strap, an Aura Ring, an Ace Pod 4, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, you can potentially save some money and support the channel by using the affiliate and non-affiliate links in the description below. If in addition to sleep, you also want to track your workouts, check out this video right here. Or if you're interested in my favorite devices for sleep improvement, check out this video right here. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.